welcome precast students to the homework help video page 806 and page 816. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and hopefully we can help you understand this math okay Start, uh, starting with numbers 23 and 25 the directions say to uh, let me look at the directions here to do the following to do u plus v let me get my pen ready here to do u plus v and to do u minus v this should be pretty simple students and 2u minus 3v so here we go uh, u plus v that would be i plus j that's u plus v which is 2i minus 3j so here we go i plus 2i would be 3i j plus a negative 3j would be a negative 2j so there we go pretty simple okay Mo uh, moving on now to the next part of this problem they want us to do u minus v so here's u 1 plus or i plus j minus v which is 2i minus 3j so here we go we have i minus 2i that would be negative 1i or just negative i okay then we have j minus negative 3j so that's really j plus 3j so we'd have a positive 4j pretty simple and moving on okay i always pause to check the answers on these guys that's what i'm trying to do quickly here is uh, just check the answers okay all right moving on to the last one here 2u minus 3v so we have 2 times u which is i plus j minus 3 times v 2i minus 3j so here we go take your 2 here and multiply it through 2i plus 2j take your negative 3 and multiply it through negative 6i positive 9j so 2i negative 6i is negative 4i positive 2 positive 9 is positive 11j okay let me check the answers real quick. Yes, that is correct. And we're moving on. Here we go. Okay, number 25 looks like the same thing. So here we go. We're going to take u plus v. So here's u. u is 2i. <laughs> this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, 2i plus j. Well, students, 2i plus j would just be... 2i plus j because they're unlike terms so you cannot combine them so you would just have 2i plus j all right uh, moving on to the next problem u minus v u of course is 2i and then minus v v is j so 2i minus j nothing else you can really do they're unlike terms so you cannot combine them so moving on Next, we would have 2 times u, so 2 times 2i minus 3 times v, which is j. So 2 times 2i would be 4i, and negative 3 times j would be negative 3j. Those are unlike terms, so you cannot combine them, so your answer would be 4i minus 3j. Okay, so again, pretty simple. Moving on to numbers 27 through 35, find a unit vector in the direction of the given vector okay now for number 27 here we could graph this if we wanted to but the main thing for you to realize is simply this anytime you're asked to find a unit vector in the direction of a given vector just use this formula here in this case we're dealing with vector u so the formula would be u divided by the magnitude of u okay and that would be it so here we go vector u is 3 comma 0 so that goes up top the magnitude of u would be well square the 3 square the 0 add them together take the square root you get 3 so the magnitude of u would be 3 so your final answer is 3 over 3 which is 1 and 0 over 3 which is 0 so there you go this formula here will work every time. Okay, let me check the answer very quickly in the book. 
and we will continue on. Yes, that is correct. Okay, number 29. In number 29, we're dealing with vector v, so we're going to put v over the magnitude of v. And here we go. Vector v, of course, is negative 2, comma 2, so that's your numerator. Your denominator is vector the magnitude of v. And so let's see, the magnitude of v would be square your 2, that's 4, square your 2, that's 4, add them together, you get 8, so the square root of 8. Now really, to be honest with you, we should put this. We should put 4 times 2. Okay, not sure what the back of the book, but, but 4 times 2 is 8. We know the square root of 4 is 2, so cross off the 4 and put a 2 on the outside. So really the magnitude is 2 square root of 2. So here's our unit vector. Negative 2 over 2 square root of 2, comma, 2 over 2 square root of 2. Now you really should reduce your fractions. And notice this is an outside number here, and this is an outside number here, so they can be reduced. And the same with these two numbers here. So really we should reduce those. So 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 2, 1, 1, 2 goes into 2, 1, 2 goes into 2, 1. So really your final answer should be 1 over square root of 2 comma, or negative, sorry about that, bring down your negative sign right here, and then 1 over square root of 2, okay? Now on unit vectors, I have said you do not have to rationalize the denominator, and the back of the book has the exact same answer, so this is totally fine, okay? Okay, number 31. Okay, let's find the unit vector. My, my advice would be to first of all just simply rewrite this so it looks familiar. I would just put 6 comma negative 2. I think it's easier, okay? And now we have vector v over the magnitude of v. So here we go. Vector v of course is 6 comma negative 2 over and then the magnitude of v would be, well we'll square the 6, that's 36, square the 2, that would be 4 add them together you get 40 and then of course 40 is 4 times 10 cross off the 4 put a 2 on the outside 2 square root of 10 okay and there we go now let's go ahead and simplify this okay 6 over 2 square root of 10 comma negative 2 over 2 square root of 10 okay and now we can reduce outside number with outside number and outside number with outside number. So here we go. 3 over square root of 10, comma, negative 1 over square root of 10. And there we go. This is a unit vector going in the same direction as this vector here. Let me check the uh, back of the book real quick here. And one thing I noticed here in the back of the book, and really they're correct, if your original problem was written as a linear combination, your final answer should be two. Really, I do, I do stand corrected on this. So let's go ahead and fix this real quick. should be 3 over square root of 10 i minus 1 over square root of 10 j. Okay, that really should be the correct way to write it because your original problem was written as a linear uh, combination, so your final answer should be 2, so that's correct. Okay, moving on to number 33. Um, I would rewrite this. Now remember, students, please don't forget this. This is not 4 comma 0. Okay, you're your i comes first, and this is a j. So really what you have is 0i plus 4j. So your component form would be not 4, 0, but 0, 4. So there we go. That would be factor w. Okay? Now here we go. Let's quickly find the magnitude. If you square 0, it's 0. Square 4, it's 16. 0 plus 16 is 16. Take the square root of 16, and that would be 4. So we come over here, we put the vector on top. 0, comma 4, divided by 4, and we end up with 0, comma 
1. Okay, so we need to write this as um, as a linear combination like we like the original problem was written. So you're welcome to write your answer as 0i plus 1j if you want to, or you can just write j for your answer. Either way is correct, okay? And let me check the back of the book, and yes, we are correct. Moving on, number 35. Okay, 1i minus 2j, so your component form would be 1 comma negative 2. Let's quickly find the magnitude. Square the 1, square the 2, take the square root of 5. So we take our vector, we put it over the magnitude, and the magnitude is square root of 5, so it looks like our answer would be 1 over square root of 5, comma, negative 2 over square root of 5. And of course, because your original problem was written as a linear pair, then this answer here should be written as a linear pair, so 1 over square root of 5, i, minus, 2 over square root of 5j, okay? So there we go, and that should be number 35. Let me check that answer real quick, and we are good. Moving on, okay? Numbers 37 through 39, find vector v with a given magnitude in the same direction as u. Okay, well this shouldn't be too hard, guys. First of all, what we're trying to do is this. We're trying to find a vector that has this length, and it's going this direction. So here's my suggestion to you. Watch this carefully. First of all, let's get a picture of this vector right here. There it is. Okay? 3, 3. Piece of cake. No problem. Now, let me show you something, students. If we're going to try to find the length, um, or not the length, if we're going to try to find the vector that has a length of 5, okay? It's going to fall somewhere on this line. Now, it might stop here. It might, it might go up to here and stop right here. That might be a length of 5, or it might be longer than this vector. It might be all the way out here somewhere. We have to find this ordered pair right here. But either way, we know one thing. We know this vector we're looking for. We know two things. We know that it has a magnitude of 5, okay? And we know that it has to, to go in this direction. So I've got a thought. If I can quickly find this angle right here, very quickly, that's going to be a big help. Watch. I know I go over 3 and up 3. So I can quickly find this angle by saying tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So let me grab my calculator here. Second tangent of 1 gives me 45 degrees. So now I know this angle right here is 45 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is 45 degrees. Now, think about it guys, all that you have to do is find a triangle that has, let's draw it over here, all you have to do is find a triangle that has what for the hypotenuse? 5 and has what for the, degree, the degrees right here? 45, and then you know how far over you are and you know how far up you are. Think about it, because we know that we know the angle has to be 45, because you're looking for a vector that runs in the same direction right here, okay? So you know the angle has to be 45, you know the magnitude has to be 5, because they tell you that, so we can do this pretty quickly, guys. Cosine of 45 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, multiply both sides by 5, And the cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. So we really have 5 times square root of 2 over 2, which is 5 square root of 2 over 2. There we go. So now I know how far over this point is right here. Here's my vector going up like this. Okay. So I know how far over it is. It's 5 square root of 2 over 2. And now I can find how far up it is by using... Uh, sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 5. 5 sine of 45 equals y. Okay. Well, the sine of 45 would be 
square root of 2 over 2, same thing. So 5 times square root of 2 over 2 would be 5 square root of 2 over 2. So this would go right up here in place of y, okay? So there we go. So I found the, the vector, okay? It's over 5 square root of 2 over 2, and it's up uh, 5 square root of 2 over 2. So the vector would look like this. 5 square root of 2 over 2, comma, 5 square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so all that we had to do, let me check the answer real quick in the book to make sure we didn't make a little mistake somewhere. And yes, we are correct. So think about it, students, for a second. All that we had to do is find this direction angle here. Okay? And then once we knew that angle, we just built a triangle over here that had the same angle but had a magnitude of 5 because that's the magnitude we were trying to have. Okay, let's try another one. Number 39. Okay? All right, here we go. Over 2 and up 5. So we know we're going to have a triangle that looks like this. Over 2 and up 5. So about right here. Okay, here's your vector. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and draw my triangle here. I'm going to go over 2. I'm going to go up 5. So now I can find this theta right here. Okay? So real quick, tangent of theta equals 5 over 2, opposite over adjacent. So second tangent, 5 divided by 2 would be 68.2 degrees. So this would be 68.2. Alright, 68.2. Now, let's come over here. We're going to draw a triangle that's like this. Looks pretty much the same. Okay. And we're going to put 68.2 right here. And our hypotenuse here will have a length of what? Well, the vector we're trying to find has a magnitude of 9. So we know this is 9. We know we're over x. And we're up y. So here we go. Cosine of 68.2 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 9. There we go. And I would get uh, 9 cosine 68.2 3.34. Okay. 3.34. And then we can use sine of 68.2 equals opposite over hypotenuse multiply both sides by 9 9 sine 68.2 equals y so 9 sine 68.2 would be 8.36 so there we go so we're over 3.34 and we're up 8.36 so the vector would look like this 3.34 comma 8.36 okay there we go pretty cool okay moving on to number 41 the directions for 41 through 45 read as follows. Find the component form of V and sketch the specified vector operations geometrically. And I'm not going to make you guys do the <coughs> sketching geometrically. Um, where U equals 2I. Let me write this down here. U equals 2I minus J. And W equals... I plus 2J. Okay, there we go. So, number 41, we're going to find the component form of 3 halves times U. Okay, here we go. 3 halves times U. 2I minus 2, no, minus J. Okay, so here we go. Let's take uh, 3 halves and multiply it through. Okay, 3 halves times 2 would be 3I. 3 halves times negative 1 would be negative 3 halves. J, so component form would be 3, comma, 
negative three halves. There we go, number 41. Okay, pretty simple. All right, let me copy this here so we have it. And let's go on to number 43. All right, we're going to write a vector in component form that has uh, u plus tw quality. So here we go. For u, we're going to put 2i minus j plus 2 times i plus 2j. Okay, so here we go. 2i minus j plus 2i plus 4j. Okay, took the 2 and multiplied it through. Now let's combine like terms. 2i plus 2i would be 4i. Negative j plus 4 would be positive 3j. So there we go. We did all of the um, operations we're supposed to do. And so next, we then simplified and we ended up with uh, 4i plus 3j. So the component form would be 4 comma 3. Okay, let me check the answers real quick. And that is correct. Moving on to number 45. Okay, let's see what we have here. We have three. I'm going to go ahead and take some shortcuts here, guys, and skip some steps, okay? Three times u would be three times two, six i minus three j. So I went ahead and took the three and multiplied it times u. So three u equals all of this here. And then plus w, so plus w, i plus 2j. Okay, let's go ahead and combine like terms. 1 half times 7i minus j. So we'd end up with 7 halves i minus 1 half j. So component form would be 7 over 2 comma negative one half okay and that's number 45 and that is the correct answer okay moving on to number uh, numbers 47 and 49 okay students number of the directions for 47 and 49 say to find the magnitude <coughs> and direction and angle of vector v Okay, so here we go. Um, first of all, this is pretty simple here. It's obvious if we took the 3 and multiplied it through, we would have 3 cosine of 60i, okay, plus 3 sine of 60j. So right away, if we're taking the cosine of 60 and the sine of 60, we know that our direction angle is going to be 60 okay so there's our direction angle that our our actual magnitude would be 3 because of this number here so there we go so the direction angle would be six, uh, 60 degrees and the magnitude of V would be 3 so that's pretty simple you can see the answers there uh, just by looking at the original problem, okay? Okay, number 49. This will be a little more challenging here. Let's see what we have. We have positive 6. And then negative 6 over 6 and then down 6. So approximately here. Here's our vector. So if I were to draw a triangle, I would go over 6. And I would go down six. So let's try to find theta right here real quick, okay? Um, and actually the magnitude's really fast. Let's find the magnitude really fast, okay? Remember this this vector here is really this right here. Six comma negative six. Okay, so the magnitude would be the square of the six. Square of the six. You would get seventy two, which is the same thing as thirty six times two. We know the square root of 36 is 6, so cross off the 36 and put a 6 on the outside. So we're left with 6 square root of 2 for the magnitude. So there's the magnitude. 
now let's find the direction let's find theta here so we have opposite is 6 adjacent is 6 so tangent of theta is 6 over 6 or 1 that should be 45 degrees okay so we know the direction and angle here it was not the direction angle, we know theta is 45 degrees so the direction angle for a vector always starts here and goes through the hypotenuse so the direction angle would be 315 degrees okay and the magnitude would be 6 square root of 2 okay, let me check the book real quick make sure we didn't make a mistake anywhere and we are totally exactly right okay so moving on now to number 55 okay we are going to find the component form of vector v uh, given its magnitude and the angle it makes with a positive x-axis so number 57 all right here we go F uh, find the component form so we know we have um, v goes in this direction here 1 plus 3j okay so we've kind of done these before so we know we go over 1 up over 1 and up 3 for this vector okay so if we want to find the direction angle very quickly we can do that over 1 up 3 so this angle right here would be uh, tangent of theta equals 3 over 1 so let me write that down so you guys can see it. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Seventy one point five six, so seventy one point six degrees. All right, so in this triangle here, we now have a triangle like this. And we know the angle is 71.6. And we know the magnitude right here is 2. So here's the magnitude. Okay, here's the right angle. Okay, and we'll call this 2. So very quickly, if I, if I want to find how far over I am x and how far up I am y, then it's pretty simple. Uh, cosine of x equals uh, adjacent over hypotenuse x would be actually 71.6 there we go equals adjacent over hypotenuse multiply both sides by 2 2 cosine of 71.6 equals x so with the calculator real quick 2 cosine 71.6 would be 0 0.6313 uh, 0.631 let's put 0.63 and now let's find the length of y. So we're going to say sine of 71.6 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 2. And we have 2, 71.6 equals y. So 2 sine 71.6 would be 1.9. 1 1.9, 1 .9, okay? So the vector would be over... 0.63 and up 1.9 okay let me check the back of the book real quick make sure that's correct okay and that answer is correct so moving on to number 59 okay okay uh, 59 and 61, the directions say to find the component form of the sum of u and v with the given magnitude and direction angles of theta of u and theta of v. So we're going to find the component form of these two vectors being added together, okay? So my suggestion to you, uh, students, think about it for just a second. It's much easier to add vectors when they're in component form. So my suggestion to you is to take this vector here and quickly write it in component form. 
Okay, so we know the direction angle is zero. So we know we're going to be right here on this axis right here. And we know we go out. How far? What's the magnitude? Five. Let's go over that again, okay? We can uh, we can see that the direction angle is zero, so we know we're not going to go up any at all. We're just going to stay right on the x-axis. The direction angle is zero. And we know the magnitude or the length is five, so we know we're going to go out five. So this order appears pretty simple. It's five comma zero. So this first vector can be written in component form like this. Five comma zero. Now let's take our next vector here and let's write it in component form. Now this vector here has a direction angle of 90 so we rotate here to here. So here's the line it's going to fall on right here and we know the length of this vector is 5 so we know it's 5 so this ordered pair right here would be 0 5. So this vector here would be 0, 5. Okay, so now I add those two vectors together, and they did say in the directions that you wanted your answer to be in component form, I believe. Yes, so very easy. Add these two together, so your answer is going to be 5 plus 0 and 0 plus 5. So the answer would be the sum of these two vectors would be 5, comma 5. Let me check the back of the book real quick here. Yes, we are correct. Moving on. Okay, same thing. Well, it would be very helpful if we could write this vector right here in component form. So our direction angle is 45. So we're going to rotate up 45 degrees. Okay. And we're going to go out to a magnitude of 20. Okay. So just find x and just find y. Now we've done quite a few of these uh, with all of our trig background and also the past problems in this lesson so I'm just going to say this if you used cosine to find x you should get this here you would get cos you would get x equals 20 cosine of 45. Okay let me show you real quick um, you would set it up cosine of 45 equals adjacent over hypotenuse and then multiply both sides by 20. So you get this right here. Okay, so, and the cosine of 45 should be square root of 2 over 2. So really you have this for x for your um, distance going over here. Your x would be, let's see, 20 times square root of 2 over 2, put this over 1, this would cancel 10, you would get 10 square root of 2. There's your x, okay? Now for your y, well, we would use sine, so basically it would be 20, it would be y equals 20 sine of 45 degrees. If you set it up correctly, you know, y equals um, cosine, or sine, excuse me, if you set it up, sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse, multiply both sides by 20, you would get this right here. So 20 times sine of 45 is also square root of 2 over 2. So you would get 10 square root of 2. So there's the one vector, okay? 10 square root of 2, comma, 10 square root of 2. Okay, now let's find the other vector in component form. The direction angle is 180, so this one will be a little easier, okay? You're going to start here and go to here, so 180 degrees, and you're going to go out 50, so you go way out here to this, and we'll call this a length of 50. So obviously the ordered pair would be negative 50, 0. Okay, so vector component form would be negative 50, comma, 0. Okay? Alright, so what we did, students, is we took this vector here, and we wrote it in component form, and we took this vector here, and we wrote it in component form. Okay? Now, the only thing that's left to do is to add these two vectors together. So if we do, <clears throat> if we do that correctly, negative 10 square root of 2 
plus negative 50. You can't combine them. They're unlike terms. One is a radical term and one is a constant term. So it would be like this. 10 square root of 2 minus 50. Okay, that's how we would add these two together. And then comma, 10 square root of 2 plus 0 would be 10 square root of 2. That's a tough problem. I hope that makes sense. Okay, guys? All right, moving on. Number, that's it for that section. Okay, moving on to the next section. Section 13.4, number 1. Okay, we're going to find the dot product for numbers 1 and 3. So it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, here we go. Dot product of 1 and 3. Let me go ahead and turn the back of the book so I'm on the right page for these. And here we go. Okay, dot product. Multiply first number times first number. That's negative 12. Multiply second number times second number. Positive 3. And then you add those two numbers together. So you would get negative 9 for the dot product of number 1. Okay? Uh, the dot product for number 3, same thing. Uh, 4i, negative 2j is the same thing as 4, comma, negative 2 in component form. And of course, i minus j would be 1, comma, negative 1 in component form. So 4 times 1, first number times first number is 4. Second number times second number is a positive 2. Add those together and you get 6. Okay? So uh, the dot product for number 3 would be 6. Okay, moving on to numbers 5 through 5 and 7. Use vectors. Here they are. Use these vectors here. U equals 2 comma 2 and V equals negative 3 comma 4. Let's go ahead and cut. Let's go ahead and copy those real quick so we have those saved. Okay, there we go. Using those vectors, we are going to um, find the given quantity. Okay, then, it's, then it says state whether the answer is a vector or a scalar. Of course, we'll see that when we're, when we're all done working this out. So, okay, number five is u times u. So we're going to have two times two. We're going to have uh, two comma two times two comma two. So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, add those together, and you get 8 for the dot product, okay? And obviously that would be a scalar, not a vector. Okay, moving on to number 7. All right, number 7. Okay, we have dot product of u and v, first of all, inside the parentheses. Let's go and take the dot product of u and v. So inside the parentheses we would have 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 2 times 4 is positive 8 negative 6 and positive 8 would be 2 so the dot product of u and v would be 2 and then on the outside right here we have v so negative 3 comma 4 so now we take the 2 and we multiply it through the vector so for this answer here, we will have a vector for our answer. So negative 6, 8 would be the answer. Negative 6, 8 for number 7. Okay, moving on to numbers 9, 11, and 13. Use the dot product to find the magnitude of u. All right, here we go. Okay, now at number 9 here, if you think about it, students, when I ask you to find the magnitude of u, think about this, guys. I'm really asking you to do what? To square the 5, the negative 5, and get 25, and square the 12, and get 144, and then add those two numbers together, so you get 169, which is 13, okay? But if you think about it, I mean, it's really redundant. We're, we're still going to do uh, what the directions say, but really, you're taking... 5 times 5 and 12 times 12 and then you're adding it together so really what they're saying is this because you're taking 5 times 5 and 12 times 12 that's the exact same thing as taking the dot product of u and the dot product the dot product of u and u 
and taking the square root of it because look think about it the dot product of u and u would be well let's, let's write u twice here so it would be 5 times 5 is 25 12 times 12 is 144 and then add them together so it's the exact same thing think about it when you find the the magnitude of u you're squaring this and squaring this and then adding them which is how I've taught you to do it well that's the exact same thing as taking uh, u times the, the dot product of u and u u times u because you take 5 times 5 put it here you take 12 times 12 put it here add them together and then take the square, the square root so all they want you to do for numbers 9 um, 11 and th 13 is just this whatever vector you're given they want you to find the magnitude like this the square root of the dot product of u at times u so that's pretty simple the dot product of u and u would be well let's see negative 5 12 so we'll just do it again real quick 5 times 5 is 25 12 times 12 is 144 add those together and we get um, 139 so it's the square root of 169 excuse me so the answer would be 13 for number 9 okay 13 let's try number 11 here okay I'm gonna write you like this U is 20 plus no 20 comma 25 and now we're gonna find the magnitude by doing use the dot product so square root of the dot product of u times u so I really have 20 25 times 20 25 so 20 times 20 would be 400 25 times 25 would be 625 we're finding the dot product right now of, of u times u so we'd end up with 1025 so the dot product of u and u is 1025 and then take the square root of 1025 and you will get 32.01 and probably they want us to just leave it um, in radical form so really actually you would have this if you broke 1025 down 25 goes into this uh, 41 times and the square root of 25 would be 5 so I'll put a 5 on the outside so the answer would be 5 square root of 41 okay there we go moving on to number 13 okay the vector component form of u would be 0 6 and they want us to find the magnitude by doing this right here the square root of dot product of u and u so we really have 0 6 and 0 6 let's go ahead and find the dot product over here uh, 0 times 0 is 0 uh, 6 times 6 is 36 add the two numbers together you get 36 so the dot product of u times u would be 36 and the square root of 36 would be 6 okay so the answer to 13 should be 6 all right moving on to numbers uh, 15 through 23 the directions a to find the angle between the vectors okay find the angle between the vectors okay students remember that anytime you're finding the angle between two vectors the formula you use is this cosine of theta equals the dot product of your two vectors in this case it's u and v over the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector okay let me quickly copy this so we can use this for the following problems there we go and let's continue on here we go okay we have let's see, a dot product of u let's pull this down here so we can work our way down okay here we go uh, cosine of theta would equal okay dot product of u and v 1 times 0 is 0 0 times negative 2 is 0 so 0 plus 0 
would be zero. Okay, so there we go. Now, um, so the numerator is zero. The magnitude of, and we do understand that magnitude cannot be z zero, it can't have a length of zero. So there's going to be some number down here. Um, I'm not going to waste my time and try to find that number, like the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, and multiply them together because there's really no need to. Because if zero is in, in the numerator, then I know the whole right side here is going to become zero. So I'm really going to have cosine of theta equals zero. Okay? And I believe it's going to be 180 degrees. Let me quickly check. Second cosine of zero is 90, actually. So the angle between these two vectors is 90 degrees. Okay? All right, let's continue on to number 17. Okay, there's our formula. Let's go ahead and do some work here. I would have cosine of theta equals now we have u times v. I'm going to quickly write these two vectors in component form. So u would be 3, 4. v would be 0, negative 2, because j comes second. There we go. So dot product. 3 times 0 is 0. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Add those two together, you get negative 8. So, the dot product of u and v would be negative 8. Now, let's go ahead and find the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v and then multiply those together. So the magnitude of u would be square root of the 9, square root of the 4, that's 16, add them together, 25, 5. So the magnitude of u is 5 times the magnitude of v, so the magnitude of v would be square root of the 0, square root of the 2, add them together, and then take the square root of that, you'll get 2. So we end up with the cosine of theta is negative 8 over 10. So quickly with my calculator, I'm going to type in second cosine of negative 4 fifths. and that will give me an angle of 143 degrees. Let me check that in the book real quick. Yes, that is correct. So the angle between these two vectors would be uh, 143 degrees. Uh, rounded, of course. Okay, moving on to number 19. Let's go ahead and write these two vectors in component form, just so it's a little easier that way to see them. So we'll have 2 comma negative 1 and 6 comma 4. There we go. Now let's take the dot product of u and, and v. And let's see. 2 times 6 is 12. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. We'll add those two together and we'll get 8. So there's the dot product, okay? Now let's find the magnitude of u the magnitude of u, so we have square root of the 2, square, uh, square root of the 1, add them together, square root of 5, okay? Now let's find the magnitude of v, so square root, square root of the 6, square root of the 4, add those together, and we get 52. So square root of 52. Alright, so uh, next we would have cosine of theta equals 8 over the square root of 260. So grabbing a calculator very quickly, getting a decimal here. Uh, next I would have this. Cosine of theta equals point four nine six one and I'm going to round it right there so second uh, cosine of that decimal number would be an angle of let me make sure I'm right here 
uh, 60.26 degrees. So we're just going to say 60 degrees. Which is the correct answer. Okay, there we go. Moving on to number 21. All right, let's go ahead and write these in component form. 5 comma 5 and negative 6 comma 6. Here's our formula. So we have cosine of theta equals, okay, let's take the, let's take the dot product of u and v. 5 times negative 6, negative 30. Uh, 5 times 6 would be 30. Okay, so we get 0 up top in our numerator. So really, students, again, back like, back like number um, 15, it really doesn't matter what this bottom number ends up being here because we have 0 up top. So zero under uh, zero over any number other than zero itself, and we know this this isn't going to be a zero here because uh, none of these magnitudes here are going to be zero. So we know that zero over any number is just going to be zero. So we really have the cosine of theta equals zero, which would be ninety degrees. Okay. Let me check the book real quick, but that should be right. Yes, 90 degrees. Okay, so moving on to number 23. 23. Now this will be a little interesting here, but let's let's not panic. Okay, first of all, let's rewrite this like this. Let's put u equals, this will help a little bit, cosine of 60i plus sine of of 60 degrees of course J okay and then V would be cosine of 135 I think that's right 35 or 105 let me see real quick here it would be uh, let's see 180 divided by 4 times 3 135 so cosine of 135 degrees I plus sine of 135 degrees J okay so really we can get rid of this now we just quickly got rid of the radians and wrote it with degrees okay that's a little easier for us to use okay now it'd be really helpful if we could write these in component form let's get our formula down here out of the way we'll use this later there we go now First of all, students, the cosine of 60 and the sine of 60 would be this for you. Uh, the cosine of 60 is 1 half. So we have 1 half i. Okay. And the sine of 60, and of course, we, these are our special angles, so we have exact numbers for these. This would be square root of 3, I believe divided by 2, so square root of 3 over 2, okay? There we go, okay? Now for you, uh, be careful here, students, okay? Or for, this was this was uh, you right here, sorry about that, students. Okay, this is you right here. A little discombobulated, there we go, okay, V. Now, uh, think about the students. 135, the reference angle for 135 would be 45 degrees. So we can use 45 degrees here. As long as we remember that cosine is negative in this quadrant and sine is positive. So whatever we get out here, put a negative sign here for the I. And whatever we get out here, be sure and put a positive sign for the J. Okay, so there we go. Now, cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And 
the sine of 45 would be the same thing, so square root of 2 over 2 j. So while we've really done a lot of work and we're not close to being done, okay? First of all, we have the problem written in radians, so we converted it over to degrees. Then we took it and we did all the, the trig work and we got these written as a linear combination. Now, I would suggest that we write these vectors in component form. So u would be 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2, okay? And v would be negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, okay? And now we're ready for our formula here. Let's go ahead and erase this. Let's pull up our formula here. Did not mean to do that, that's for sure. And here we go. Okay. This is going to be really, really interesting. So here we go. Cosine of eta equals, okay, dot product. One half times this would be negative square root of 2 over 4. And this times this would be square root of 6 over 4, okay? So if we add those together, we would get square root of 6 plus, not plus, sorry about that, square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4, okay? Now let's find the magnitude of u. The magnitude of u, we're going to square 1 half and get 1 fourth, and we're going to square this. Square root of th square root of three squared is three. Two squared is four. So we get four over four, which is square root of one, which is one. So the magnitude of u would be one. Okay. And then here, uh, we square this here. Square root of two squared would be two. Square root of the two, you get a four. Plus. Square this here, you get 2. 2 fourths plus 2 fourths would be 4 fourths, which would be 1, which is 1. So times 1. So really, students, what it comes down to is this. We have 1 times 1 in the denominator here, which is just 1. So really, it's this whole thing over 1. So really, we just have cosine of theta equals square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4 all over 1, which we really don't need all over 1. So with my calculator, I'm going to quickly type in square root of 6 minus square root of 2, enter And mine did not work, so hold on one second here. Square root of 6 minus square root of 2, enter, divided by 4, enter. And I'm getting this right here, point two five eight eight one nine etc. I left that whole thing on my screen. I had a second cosine of the answer. And I got exactly 75 degrees. Okay, exactly 75 degrees. So let's check the back of the book. Hopefully that's correct. Number 23. And let's see if that's correct. Yes, yeah, 75 degrees is correct. Okay, so pretty tough problem. But it was a good problem. Okay, good thinking problem. Okay, four problems left. Here we go. Number 30, 25. You don't necessarily have to graph this. I'm going to, so you get a good picture of it here. I think it would help us. So go over 1, up 2. Go over 3, up 4. Go over 2, and up 5. Okay, so right here. So there's our triangle. Okay. Then we're going to give these triangle, these points some names. A, B, C, so this is a vertex A, 
I think that makes it a little easier. B and C. Okay. Now, let's see here. We're trying to find the angle between vectors. Okay. So, let's start off with vector CA or AC, this vector right here. Let's start off with this vector here. Okay. Now, really, let's write that in component form. Okay. So, CA. And really, it would be AC, so vector AC in component form would be, let's see, take your, remember, take your terminal point and subtract it from your initial point. So we would take 2 minus 1 would be 1, 5 minus 2 would be 3. Okay, so what I did is I took this vector here, students, and I wrote it in component form because, look, the directions say, to find the interior angles. If I'm going to find this angle here, I would love to have it in comp I would love to have this vector here, right here, and this vector here in component form. That would be a huge help, okay? So that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I did. Now let's go with vector AB, okay? Vector AB in component forms. So vector AB. Remember, terminal point minus initial point to write it into component form. So that would be 3 minus 1 would be 2, and 4 minus 2 would be 2. So there we go. Now, that's vector. That's this vector here in component form, and this vector here in component form. So now that I've done that, I can very quickly find this angle by using my formula, uh, which is dot product of this uh, dot product of those two vectors, so cosine of theta is, find the dot product real quick, 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, add those together, and we get 5, uh, sorry about that, 2, 6, we get 8, I'm not sure where I got 5 from, and then we find the magnitude of each vector, well the magnitude of this vector would be square root of 10, and the magnitude of this vector would be uh, square root of 8. Okay, so, so we really have cosine of theta equals 8 over square root of 80. Let's grab my calculator real quick here. 8 divided by square root of 80. And then second cosine of that decimal would give me 26.6 degrees. Okay, so number 25, 26. 26 degrees, okay? 26.6. So this angle right here, I'm called angle A. Angle A is 26.6. Now I'm going to change colors, okay? Now students, it really doesn't matter if we find this angle here next, right here, or this angle here. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go with angle B for no particular reason, okay? So if I'm going to find the angle between, oh, watch this, if I'm going to find the angle between um, these two vectors here, going this way, and going this way, okay, so the vector starts here, it's going this way, and it's going this way. I'm going to find this angle right here. Well, students, look. Um, the best thing to do is to write these two vectors in component form. So I'm going to start off with vector CB, okay? Or vector BC. So vector BC in component form would be... Okay, we'll take the terminal point uh, minus the initial point, so C minus B. So 5, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And 5 minus 4 is 1. So there's component form of BC. Now let's find component form of BA. Okay, it can be done very quickly. Take your terminal point A minus your initial point B. So A minus B. 1 minus 3 would be negative 2. And 2 minus 4 would be negative 2. Okay, so there we go. So I have both of these vectors, this vector and this vector, written in component form. So now I can find the angle between them. Pretty quickly. First of all, let's find the dot product between these. So negative 1 times negative 2 would be 2. 1 times negative 2 would be negative 2. 
So zero, boy, we, we made it. We struck it. We we struck it rich on this one, zero. So it really doesn't matter what the magnitudes are, because zero for any number will be zero. So cosine of theta equals zero, and that's going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so there we go. So this angle here, angle B is 90. So I can very quickly find angle C by adding nine, 90 plus. 26.6 minus 180 and we'll get 63.4 okay so pretty cool and not too bad okay uh, moving on to number 27 okay here we go 27 get a picture up here off to the side negative 3 0 2 2 And zero six. So here's our triangle in red, I guess. And let's give these points some names. We'll call this A, B, C. A, B, C. Okay, so here we go. Really doesn't matter which two vectors you start with. I'm going to choose to go with this vector here from A to C going this direction. Okay, this vector here A to B. So vector AC and vector AB, okay? So with that in mind, here we go. Vector AC and vector um, AB. Let's write them in component form. So AC will take C minus A, so 0 minus a negative 3 would be 3, and 6 minus 0 would be 6. So there's vector AC in component form. Vector AB We'll take b minus a, so 2 minus a negative 3 is 5, and 2 minus 0 is 2. So there we quickly wrote these two vectors here in component form, and now we're ready to use our formula. Cosine of theta equals dot product, that'd be 15, and 12, so 27. over the magnitude of this would be what? Uh, 9 plus 36, 45. So the square root of 45. And the magnitude of this would be 25 plus 4, so 29. All right, let's quickly get a decimal here. Let's see what theta equals, okay? So 20 says take the square root of 45 times the square root of 29 And of course, take 27 divided by that number. And then the cosine, second cosine of that would be 41.6 degrees. 41.6 degrees. So if you typed all this here correctly into your calculator, you will get a decimal number, something like 0.747409 okay? And then of course, take the second cosine of that or the inverse cosine of that and you will get 41.6 okay so angle A equals 41.6 okay there we go now let's go ahead and pick another factor let's pick um, I guess these right here will start at B and we'll go this direction so vector BA and vector BC. Okay, BA and BC. So here we go. So we have vector BA and vector BC. Okay, component form of BA would be A minus B. So negative 3 minus 2 would be negative 5. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then BC. So C minus B. So 0 minus 2 would be negative 2 and 6 minus 2 would be negative 4. 
So there we go, component form of BA, component form of BC. Now next, let's use our formula here, cosine of theta would be, okay, the dot product, negative five times negative two is 10, negative two plus negative four is eight, add them together, you get 18, so the dot product would be 18. The magnitude of this would be 29, square root of 29. And the magnitude of this would be uh, 2 times 2 is 4 plus uh, 16 would be square root of 20. Okay, so with my calculator, square root of 29. Times square root of 20. I'm getting a decimal point seven four seven four oh nine three one seven. So that would be that's really not possible, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting the same thing. Which unfortunately is not possible. Let's stop and see here. Hold on one second. Okay, students, I'm back, and I apologize for this mistake, and you probably saw it earlier when I was working the problem out. This would be a positive 4 here. Sorry about that. So your dot product here would be, that would that would not affect your magnitude, because when you square a 4 or when you square a negative 4, you still get 16. So your magnitude is still going to be 20, but your dot product would be 10 minus 8. We would have a... Uh, let's see here, we'd have a 2, I believe. Yes, there would be a 2 right here, not an 18. So, uh, very sorry about that. And let's see what we get here. Uh, square root of 29 times the square root of 20. And there we go. We get this for theta. And by the way, the decimal, if you type all of this incorrectly, the decimal for this would be... Um, point oh eight three oh four five four seven nine nine and then the angle would be eighty five point two which is correct according to the back of the book that's correct eighty five point two degrees sorry about that one mistake there okay so angle B would be eighty five point two so quickly with a calculator we can find angle C forty one point six plus 85.2 minus 180 would give us 53.2. So pretty long problems, but not too bad when it comes to difficulty. Okay, lastly, 29 and 31. Here we go. Find the dot product of u and v, where 0 is the angle between u and v. Okay, really when you think about it, if you just look at your formula we use for angles between vectors, here's your formula. Now watch this. This is so funny. Look. Cosine of theta equals, we're dealing with factors u and v, so it'd be u times v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Now look. They've given us everything we need to know. 2 over pi would be what? 120 degrees. So we have the cosine of 120 degrees. That's an actual number when you type it in your calculator. The cosine of 120 equals u times v over the magnitude of u is 4, right here. The magnitude of v is 10, so times 10. So 4 times 10 would be 40. So look, guys, <laughs> just multiply both sides by 40, and you have 40 cosine of 120 degrees equals u times v, which is what you're looking for. If you look in the directions, it says to find the dot, the dot product of u and v. And so the dot product of u and v equals this over here. Now the cosine of 120 is negative 1 half. So we really have 40 times negative 1 half equals u times v. Well, 40 times negative 1 half is negative 20 equals u times v. So there, let me check the back of the book, but it looks pretty good. 
is negative 20. So the dot product of u and v is negative 20. Just by using this formula here, just plugging in or substituting all, all of our knowns here, we, we were left over with this right here. So not too difficult to solve. Okay, last problem. Here we go. Of course, this would be 45 degrees, and this is pretty easy once again. So here we go. Cosine of 45 degrees equals the dot product of u and v over the magnitude of u, which is 81, times the magnitude of v, which is 64. Okay? 81 times 64 is 5,184. Multiply both sides by that. So we have 5,184 cosine of 45 equals u times v. Okay? Now, the uh, cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. So we have 5,184 times square root of 2 over 2. And really put this over 1 if you want to. So your 2 would cancel into this. Uh, 25, 92. So you'd have 2,592 square root of 2 equals the dot product of u and v. Let me check the back of the book here real quick. And that is correct, okay? So students, I hope this homework help video has been a help to you guys. Pretty long assignment, but not too difficult at math, just long. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.